Hi there, I'm Becky Hammond, founder and strengths maven over at Nisogo and isogostrong.com, where we know that relationships are hard, so let's make them easier with your strengths. And welcome to the Isogo TV video and audio podcast. Here on Isogo TV, we are fueling family connection and work energy by focusing in on your strengths instead of fixating on your weakness. And today you are joining us for episode 81, right at the start of our season four interview series, all about using strengths. Here, leaders, coaches, parents, spouses, regular people are talking about what happens in their lives when they truly begin using and harnessing the strongest things about them in their work or their marriages or their parenting and beyond. And today's guest is Annalyn Miller. Annalyn and her husband Brandon are successful business owners and the parents of seven children, spanning two generations. Annalyn owns and operates the Annalyn Miller Group. It's a real estate company. And she takes great pride and pleasure in just helping hundreds of families realize their dream of home ownership. And as a hands-on mother, Annalyn weaves together the priorities and strengths of the entire Miller family to facilitate a dynamic and intentional home culture. And what's exciting about today's episode is you actually get to see that home culture and how that's been transformed by understanding and then much by trial and error, implementing a strengths-oriented perspective in their family. And this month, she and Brandon are launching their new book. It's called Play to Their Strengths, all about a new approach to parenting. So let's dive into this conversation with Anna Lynn. Hello, hello today. This is Anna Lynn Miller. Hello, Anna Lynn. Hi, Becky. <laughs> Hi. I'm saying that right, right? Like every time I say it, I'm like, is that right? I mean, Miller, I feel like I can get, but it's Anna Lynn, right? Yes, Anna Lynn. Perfect. It's Anna perfect. Lynn. All right, perfect. <laughs> well, Anna Lynn and I recently became connected. I think we first got on the on a video call together maybe last fall. Um, yep. the, you and Brandon, Brandon Miller is your husband, David Hammond, my husband. Uh, we got on because we share a passion for family and marriages and um, making an impact in in families through what we do through our parenting and who we are to each other in our marriages. And so I'm excited today to explore a little bit about um, what the strengths perspective has meant in your life, um, especially as it has to do with your parenting. I know that awesome. this month you guys have a parenting book coming out. What's it called again? Play to Their Strengths. Play to Their Strengths by Brandon and Annalyn Miller, and um, we will definitely give you all the links in the show notes and in the conclusion today, so make sure that you stick around for that, um, but it is, um, I got a little bit of a preview copy, and it is, um, it's just awesome, and I think one of the most awesome things about it is how practical it is, um, yeah. they even have a journal, like a playbook type thing coming a lot yeah. out with it, so um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is what parents need. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we wrote it because we needed it too. We, we actually refer back to it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look who we have. Hi, Mosey. Uh, you want to get up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is this, are you on, coming in on cue? We have our little BBC. Hi, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, hold on just a minute while Moses yeah. finds something else to do. Oh yeah. I'm not asking you to hold on. <laughs> Okay. I was like, um, I should have locked the door. <laughs> um, David's parents are here. And um, yeah, Moses is, uh, he's the fourth. I mean, you know, so oh. you, uh, you have this experience now where you've had um, uh, multiple kids to figure out uh, how to, what, what they're going to do. And then as I, I don't know if this happened to you, but it's happening to us is as they you know, move along in the birth order, they get increasingly independent. So all of a sudden we have a not even two year old walking in saying, hi mama. <laughs> yeah. They learn things at a much faster rate. For sure. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, um, I, I'm really excited to get to chat with you today. So why don't you just, um, give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself. Tell us about yourself. What's your family like? What do you do for work? And then we'll just go from there. Okay, great. So Annalyn Miller, obviously, and I've been married for almost 26 years. Brandon wow. and I are high school sweethearts. We have seven children. So they range from nine all the way to 25. 
Wow. Um, actually, yeah, I'll have one that's 26 here in September. Awesome. And three of my older ones are married. And I've actually got one grandbaby and two more on the way. So That's possible. <laughs> I'm going to be the grandma of three. Yes, three kids in the next year. So that's amazing. Um, and probably like it's the best thing ever. I just love it. I, I've heard. Yeah, it's amazing. I've got four kids at home. So, you know, grade school and high school. And then um, my day job is uh, real estate. So I actually have a real estate team with Keller Williams. Um, so that's what I do for a living and have been doing that for 15 years. So apart from those two things, we also serve um, in youth ministry. My husband and I run a youth group on Tuesday nights, and we also are both together um, on the board of a nonprofit called X Hope. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, there's some things to be proud of. And actually, speaking of things to be proud of, what's something that, um, as you think about the listeners today getting to know you, I would love for them to know something that you feel most proud of recently? You know, I would have to say the, so it's coming out soon, but the, the video series that Brandon and I did that um, will accompany the chapters of the book. Yeah. I am just... Man, I was watching it today, and I just got pumped up because I thought, man, this, you know, was our first time doing a video series. <laughs> and it, I, you know, I was like, this, it was pretty decent. And, but what excited me, and, and it, part of it is my themes, because Max Miser is one of my themes. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, we're starting here. It's only going to get better. And mm. I was just super proud of the fact that we were able to come together Join forces. We co-did some. We did some on our own, and I just love the um, partnership yeah. that happened through that video series. So that's probably the freshest in my mind right now. Totally, totally something to be proud of. I think you said you shot like thirteen videos per chapter or something. Yeah, crazy. yeah. or thirteen videos. Yeah, a oh, chapter. One per chapter. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's one per chapter. Like, and. An incredible, incredible amount. Definitely something to be proud of, for sure. In this world of video, um, it's not easy. Everyone makes it look easy, but it's oh my gosh! And I think that's the hardest thing. Like, <laughs> oh, you think, oh yeah, we'll shoot a video. No, no. I mean, woo, it, yeah, it it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> and props that's why to I'm proud of it. <laughs> yeah, props to people who do YouTube channels, and I mean, it's props to you. <laughs> you know, who do this on the regular. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, it is fun. It ends up being fun. That's why we do it. And that's why you said yeah. this is the first of many, right? Cause you're going to do more. Yep. Um, one fun thing that we've been doing on this interview series is we have been um, choosing randomly oh, boy. Um, our, uh, my dare to dialogue card deck. So it's a conversation card deck that helps kind of uh, enliven and um, add meaningful conversation around our tables, either the okay. corporate table or a dinner table. Um, and so I'm just going to pick one. Randomly, actually, just right off the top. Awesome. And you, we could both answer it, okay? okay? All right, so of the things you do well, which can also drive others or yourself crazy? Okay. I, so of the I things you do well, what can also drive others crazy? So it's something that you do well, but really kind of might get to some people's go to. Might, might get on. I would, I would have to say... One thing that I do well is troubleshoot scenarios okay. and make them better. So, for instance, if I'm planning a party or, um, you know, getting ready to roll out a marketing plan for, you know, something real estate related, yeah. I, I, can, I do really great at going and going, oh, we missed that, we missed that, we missed that. Now, the, where it comes in, where I can irritate myself and I irritate others is, once I've done that, I want to do it again, mm -hmm. and I want to do it again. <laughs> like there's, no <laughs> stopping. And there's just no stopping because I just think it can always be better. So, so I would say that would be the one thing that, and it irritates me too sometimes because I think, can I just, can I just set it down, leave it, and be content? You know? Yes. And there is a measure of peace that comes from that of going. You know, I we did a great job. I'm just going to set this down and let it be. <laughs> and move on to the next. And move thing, on. Uh, improve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can relate to that. I, um, I don't have Maximizer in my top five, but I have a Ranger. And there's just something to that that just is like, well, 
this worked this time, but what if we tweaked it like this for next time? It's like, right. some people are like, wait, you, you change your stuff every time? I'm like, well, yeah, don't you? <laughs> like, no. Oh, huh. Okay. That would be better. That would be easier yeah. anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so I've, um, had to, I've had to change my conversations after events or different things that we do yeah. and not go right to, this is what we could do better. Yeah. Like more of a celebration. Stop to celebrate. Yeah. and Exactly. Yeah, I work on that as well. Um, for sure, for me, one of the things that I do really well, so I have achiever number one, and that just means that I have a drive and a stamina and I have this like incessant need to get things done. And if I don't in one day, I'm like freaking out. And so um, that, that can drive, especially David, crazy, but uh, other people as well. They wouldn't maybe say it as, oh. as um, directly as people who love me the most. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, I, and I've, and that's one of the things actually that the strengths perspective has taught me is like, yeah, you can, you can have that strength, but or that talent, but you're not always using it as a strength. And I know that sometimes right. let my to-do list, um, Matt, like overcome the people that are in my life that I know my priorities are out of whack and I irritate, yeah. sure irritate myself and definitely uh, irritate other people around me. So mm. for me, that's the one. Awesome. Cool. All right. So for people out there who are familiar with the, the strengths finder language, I'd love for you to just tell them, uh, what are your top five strengths? So All right. Get that so, out there. Yeah, I am a woo communication. And then I've got, um, oh my gosh, why am I strategic <laughs> achiever and maximizer? I was like, what's my middle one? Strategic. <laughs> and then I've got, um, so woo communication, strategic, and then I have um, Achiever and Maximizer. Okay. So you are uh, an influencing force to be reckoned with, right? Yes. And yes. then knowing Brandon, um, I can imagine that you guys are, that's why you're getting this stuff done, right? <laughs> like that's why, yes. you're doing this, that's why you're providing sparks and energy. And Yeah. Well, awesome. Cool. All right. So we're going to jump into talking about a little bit about the strengths concept, the strengths perspective. And I know that's been really impactful in your life. And so I'm excited for people to get to hear about that today. So um, when you first came across the strengths concept, what problems were you looking to solve in your life? What problems were you encountering? Um, maybe even what were you thinking about most in your life when you kind of first came across the strengths concept? Okay. So we actually, this was, gosh, I want to say almost 20 years ago. I mean, it was, a, it was a, some time ago that we first um, learned about it and began implementing it into our lives. And um, originally, it was related um, with us better using the strengths that we have um, to serve. And it quickly went into our family life, like developed into it very naturally mm -hmm. um, in terms of assessing how we can work together in our marriage and then, you know, with our children as well. Yeah. So when you think about your parenting and your, um, and kind of what you were going through at the time, this was 20 years ago. So you had like yeah. a six year old and a yep. five year old and a two year old yep. or something. Um, what were the types of things that were the challenges for you that you kind of found yourself thinking about over and over? You know, I, uh, originally, and especially when you have grade school kids, uh, it's, I feel like a lot of times you're just trying to manage like getting them places and, you know, are they fed? Are they doing their homework? <laughs> you know, breaking up fights. <laughs> right. Okay. Make it shower at least once a week. <laughs> right. Um, and, but I would have to say as they got older, um, and I'm just going to kind of go into where we got our big aha moment. Yeah, totally. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Um, we realized as they were older, and that was junior high and high school age, that we just were not connecting with them. Mm. And we realized we were parenting them all the same way. Mm. And each child was receiving from us differently. And so, you know, what came out, you know, the output from each one was confusing. I mean, we were just like, well, we're doing the same thing. And it seems to be going well with you. But now we have no communication with you. And then, mm. so I think honestly, it, for us, we just realized there was just a breakdown yeah. in our connection with them. Uh, and yeah. in the, I mean, in the most simplistic form, there was a breakdown. We, we knew it. We were like, we're not, it's not two way right now. Like we did not feel like the connection was there. I feel like that is something that I hear 
a lot from from families, yeah. of, especially kids who are a little bit older. I think um, our oldest is eight, so we're kind of on the cusp yeah. of that still. You know, I mean, yeah. but there are moments where I'm like, wow, uh, we didn't connect on that. You know, and that that feels right. really hard as a parent, like really. Yeah challenging to realize like these kids that we birthed and grew and did make sure that they mm -hmm. you know, fed and clothed and had their homework done or whatever. Now we're trying to build this more mature relationship with them right. and we're having a hard time connecting. So, right. so what other paths had you tried before, before you kind of were like, Oh my goodness, we can use the strengths concept here. What other kind of avenues had you explored? You know, I think our, I would say our perspectives perspective was very much like top down, mm. you know, a lot of what we brought into our parenting um, decisions were things that were learned. Mm -hmm. So we, we just, you know, whatever I gained, you know, from my upbringing and my family and, and what he was brought up in and we kind of meshed the two and it was very top down hierarchical, you know, um, yeah. our approach was one that I would say was, you know, it's kind of our way or the highway, mm. you know, and, and it, it wasn't working. And I would say, you know, in terms of different approaches, there, there were different things we tried to do more so to manage, um, manage things when they broke down. So, mm -hmm. you know, reading books on how to deal with a strong-willed child or, you okay. know, we were more trying to find ways to deal with the consequences of us not connecting. Does that make sense? So we yes. weren't even dealing with the core. Right, like, like treating the symptoms. It's kind of like yeah. I get a little bit aggravated at like how much antibiotics are just thrown at our kids. It's like, right. but could we, I mean, okay, maybe right now we have to like deal with the situation. So maybe you do need to read the book about the strong-willed kid. I mean, like that right. probably really helped in that moment. But then, but can we, can you help me figure out like how do we prevent having all these ear infections or whatever right. from the beginning, right? The, yeah. core, the foundation of the issue. Uh, exactly. I, yeah. I feel like that's very common. Like that's a very, yes. like, I mean, and there's a lot of parenting books it seems like out there that are like, this is how you fix something that's already going wrong. Or when you've already noticed that there's a symptom that you don't like or, or don't like where it's going. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that's, I think, traditionally what we did. And so yeah. it, what's great though is with the younger kids, because we've had the opportunity to learn this, they're, they're being brought up in this way. So it's uh, awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's one reason to have like, you know, two sets of kids. <laughs> Everything that we, oh, sorry, messed up on with you guys. <laughs> right? I know. Oh, my goodness. I already feel like that from, you know, the first number one to number four. Oh. I'm kind of like, oh, sorry that I have, you're my guinea pig, but you always will be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's funny. Um, well, so then, so you're at this point where you're mm -hmm. feeling like, okay, now we're not connecting like we would like to. We right. haven't, like, we're doing the same thing with all of them. We're getting different results. And so how, how did it occur to you that we could use the strengths perspective maybe to get the diff different results and to connect more deeply? Yeah, great question. So Brandon was already working in the, um, you know, strengths world. Mm -hmm. And so we, there was an aha moment for mm -hmm. him, which caused us to go back to implementing the, you know, the strengths themes, having all of our kids take it and then mm -hmm. essentially being coaching them up in that way and then relating with them depending on what their themes were. And so it was a oh. cool, it was like a shift in, you know, how we spoke to them, the different disciplines we did with each one, um, the different, I would even say, uh, you know, the, the roadmaps for each one became really different depending on you know, who they were. Yeah. So, you know, I think one great case study is our daughter, Sierra, because she was a freshman when all of this came about. Okay. And very formative. Very, time. very <laughs> formative. And this girl, she, you know, she did everything. She was like a cheerleader on mock trials. She did FFA. She worked with animals. I mean, like she did wow. everything. And, um, and it was great because we said, you know what, let's, let's, hone you in and put you down an avenue that you are going to soar in, that you will do the best in, that you are going to be spectacular in, right? And so, and then that took her down a whole nother path. Wow. So it was really interesting to watch wow. how she started, 
You know, what, did she, what did she think about that when you started to suggest things like that? Yeah, um, she, she was very receptive. Okay. So, you know, we had already started down the path with the older siblings. And so, um, and, and I would say this too, especially when you have a family, even one or two kids, hmm. it really takes the pressure off of them comparing each other. Hmm. And, you know, that was a huge relief, I think, for all of them, because it was like, you know, we had one daughter who just, she graduated and this was, this is our oldest daughter. And she just said, you know, we did our thing, you know, went through everything and Brandon was coaching her. And she just said, I, I don't know if going to a four year is my passion. Hmm. And then she started sharing her passion. She was passionate about makeup artistry and, you know, hair. And, and so she ended up going to school to do that. And she's five years in from being a stylist and loves it. Um, you know, and, you know, we've talked to her about, you know, opening up her own, you know, be, you know, store. Oh, with her her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but she's thriving. Like she, mm. she loves that, you know, um, about how we, you know, didn't just put her into the, the course of like, this is what you have to do. This is the next now, we were like, you do have to do something. So let, <laughs> so let me help you figure let out me help you where you're going down your road. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Well, we all have to do something. And so to have a guide like that, that cares about, uh, you know, it cares about what's best for her. And I think all parents care about what's best for their kids. For or sure. I would say most parents would put themselves in that category. Right. I think where we get hooked up on is how do we know what's best for them? And how right. do we, how do we have a path that you know, like, like you said, like different roadmaps, like how do, how do we help them set their own unique roadmap? Right. And, and, you know, interestingly, our son Lance, he really wasn't sure what he wanted to do. So for us, we just required him to keep researching, shadowing. And then during that time he needed to go to school. So he did go to, you know, a college as he was figuring it out. Yeah. Um, and now he's like a year away from being a journeyman electrician because he found out that was his passion, Aww. you know, and it, but it was one step that led to the other in terms of getting into an engineering class. And then, he, you know, and so the yeah. avenue is just opened up, but I feel as parents, it's still, you know, our responsibility. We do have a responsibility to help them, you know, kind of find their way, but right. not, you know, when they become adults, it's like, you also don't want to, you know, totally tell them what to do. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. But really help encourage them in a way that's going to empower them and, you know, yeah. make yeah. them successful. Totally. Okay. Totally. So, um, so you were, you know, now let's see, this has been, I mean, you guys are on like 10 years or so now yeah. that you've been kind of trying to help implement this with your kids. You're like, yeah. Brandon's like, I'm doing this with, the corporate world. Why couldn't we do this with right. like, people that we care most Take about? Take it home. Right? Take yeah. it home. These are our these are our direct reports in some ways, but the, yep. a little more complicated. And um, so, uh, what was that process like from going to the like the aha moment of like, I wonder if this would work. I wonder if this would help us connect more deeply. Um, tell tell me and tell parents like, what was that process like that were from you know that spark to kind of where you are implementing to, it? Yeah. yeah. What's great is our book is a roadmap for that too. And uh, so we wrote it in a really tangible way so that a parent could take this idea and like see it um, lived out in their family life really practically for us. Um, and I'm going to give just some tips, like simple, simple things. Yeah. So like in our hallway, we have everyone's top five themes. Oh, wow. So, you know, our married children, everyone has their themes. They're up for everyone to see. So, you know, that's just an easy, I feel like, um, you know, tangible thing that you can do because it's a reminder, like yes. you're going to see them. Right. When you look at that and you realize, or, you know, for instance, if you're maybe having a conversation and you feel like, wow, I'm not what I said, just, I didn't feel like it connected. Yeah. You know, it's easy to just go to the wall. <laughs> you know, why? That not oh, that's why, you know, and you revert, you know, you, you package it differently. Yeah. Yeah. I, a, I don't know how to better explain it, but sometimes we have to package things differently for each kid. Um, so that was really tangible. And we've also done family strength 
training days. Oh, so wow. we've actually had nights where everyone comes over and Brandon has done like a full family strength training. Wow. So granted, if you, you know, are not a trainer, you can still gather everyone and have conversations surrounded by it. Mm. You know, so there's, there's so many ways that you can actually take it and then bring it home and help build the understanding, you know, between each other as well, I think, which is really important. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, really on a daily basis, I think our practice is when there's ever a situation and we're making choices or, for instance, um, even deciding a disciplinary measure because we do have you know, little kids. So, right. Right. you know, yeah. someone needs to get off of their iPad and they don't, right. you know, yes, like <laughs> we're still parents. The things. Yeah. Like we, exactly. still, we don't get to talk hypothetically and still, we have to actually do these things. <laughs> right. So, you know, but even from that standpoint, we do stop and there's times where we go, okay, let's consider them and their themes before we give. Hmm said um disciplinary action and so we found that even for each kid they're disciplined very differently because they're different people yeah yeah and so how do they respond to that because i know that like my kids and they're they're really young still but like it's really hard for them to see something that's like someone who's been treated uh -huh. one way and then another kid who's been treated another way and i know that you said for your older kids in some ways it was a little bit liberating how does it right. feel for the younger kids who kind of like Huh, well, when you disciplined me, it was like this, and now this consequence, yeah. I wouldn't care about that. I, I want that consequence or whatever. <laughs> right, right. I would say this. Um, if it's being talked about regularly, mm. I mean, obviously, it's hard to, to, to say what it would be like if, for instance, you just started cold turkey. Right. <laughs> right. You might have a lot of conversations. Um, but I will say that when those times have happened and we've had a child come back and say, you know, this happened and why did they, why were they disciplined? Um, maybe they were charged money right? and they weren't grounded or maybe, you know, so, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh -huh. and being able to explain to them, well, let me tell you about Mr. So-and-so, Yeah, you know, um, these are his themes and, you know, these ways of disciplining them actually speak louder and are more substantial to him than if we were to take a phone away. Right. Just, for yeah, instance, as an example. Uh -huh. um, because they don't use their phone. Right. <laughs> like, oh, take my phone away. Yeah. I don't care. Exactly. You know what I mean? They're not on it. So, you know, it's kind of, I'm trying to keep it simple yes. from that oh, standpoint, yeah. but being able to have those conversations because they will happen. Yeah. And, and you won't be perfect at it. And that's probably the other thing that we, we talk a lot about in the book. Like, Hmm. Okay, parents, like, we're so hard on, hard on ourselves, you know, um, we could be so hard on ourselves. We are usually our biggest critic. Yeah. So, you know, you might decide, okay, maybe I don't do X, Y, Z and, you know, do yeah. this next time. Or right, right. Like, like, oh, I thought that might work. <laughs> it didn't. You know, or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 Let's just uh, I kind of feel like that's what parenting is all about. It's like but listening to your kids is huge. So yeah. really hearing what they have to say and why you want them to be able to talk with you. I always, you know, when I had the little ones growing up, it was one of those things where when you had the barrage, you're like, yes. and you're like, okay, one at a time, <laughs> you know, and it was almost like, can everyone just give me five minutes of silence? You know, um, yeah. there were those seasons of life. And then you, as they get older, you're like, come on, talk to me, talk to me. I want to know everything. And they're like, you know, death face looking at you. Uh, it's like like this happens. is where we're not connecting, I think. Yeah. Like, no, wait, I want to hear. I want to know. Um, so I think it's just important that you get in that cue of hearing them out yeah. and yeah. going, you know what, that's a good point. Or let me think about that and I'll get back to you. Right. Or, you know, and being open to that. Yeah, so that when they come and they say, this doesn't seem fair because you treated this person like this and you treated me like uh -huh. this, you have a conversation with them about why you did it, but then also right. really being open to like maybe even asking them their questions like, well, so based right. on how you're wired, what would you think would be, what, what, what do you think would be a good consequence? I mean, I know that that seems crazy, right? Like it's like, how could we ask them about what discipline would be best for them, but they kind of know, right? So we've done it. 
<laughs> We've done it. I mean, I, it's, it's kind of one of those things where I don't want to open up the whole can of worms necessarily, but that's actually yeah. happened where we've said, you know, um, we'll give them choices. Like these yeah, are your yeah. three choices and you need to pick one of one of these three things and that's going to be your discipline. So yeah. there are times where we've given them choices and granted it, I think for some parenting strategies that might sound like absurd, like, Oh my gosh, well, you're the parent, you know? And yeah. but there have been times where I feel that it's actually been more impactful because they're choosing. Right. <laughs> Right. It's not being, in some ways it's, it is being forced on them, but it's not right. Like it's, they got some say in it and right. especially at certain ages, that's really important. Right. So it's like, you know, be grounded, read this whole book in two days right. or write a paper on, you know, so it's not like anything is easy. Right. Right. Um, however, yeah, we, we have actually done that before. Huh. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool. All right. So I'm kind of like, I'm feeling like you probably have some really great examples of kind of either okay. the difference between parenting one child over another, like a specific mm -hmm. example of like in this situation, we same situation, we did this with this one and this with another, right? or just like some like change that you've seen um, in your kids because you, um, because you switched to this mentality or because you've helped them understand that by focusing on our strengths is where we're going to be most, most successful and most happy and not by fixating on our weaknesses. So kind of what examples, maybe one or two examples kind of pop into your mind specifics that we can kind of wrap our minds around. Good question. So I think I'll bring up my youngest, Daniel. Okay. Um, he's nine now. He's nine. And then we have David who's 12 and you know, they, they grow up together, but they're, you know, several years apart. The interesting thing is with Daniel, he's very athletic. He's, um, he does really well in any activity where, you know, he's, he's running, jumping, swimming. Okay. Cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, however, the scholastic side, um, he does struggle more. Hmm. And hmm. so, you know, how we've be been able to help him being someone who's so competitive hmm. and granted we, you know, we're, we're pretty sure he's got competition in his top five. <laughs> um, so being, being one that's so competitive and actually really, really hard on himself, hmm. uh, he used to really beat himself up for not being a great reader and not hitting the mark comparatively to the rest of the class yeah. because they get compared. Right. So the, the thing is, is, you know, in the school system, they're, you know, there are levels and you know, they have grades right. and there are marks, benchmarks. And so that is a great example of us having to really teach and train him through that, that be, just because his reading mark, you know, is lower than the standard in the class. Let's just say just right. to be simple. Um, it doesn't reflect on who he is. It doesn't mean that he's below standard and that he's, you know, cause I think, for children, they can really begin to feel like, oh, well, then what's wrong with me? Right. You know? Oh, totally. and so what's great is we were able to have a conversation with this teacher as well. And I actually, I share this with parents often, you know, that your teachers are so willing if they know, you know, where you're coming from. So it's like, talk to them, share with them, you know, the strategies that you're using with them. Oh, so that's so interesting. It is. It's great. And so for Daniel, one of the things we did is we decided, okay, let's partner. And we know he incrementally needs to get better. He may not be the top, but he needs to get better. And so we made competitions up. Hmm. So we changed how he was meeting those reading, you know, benchmarks, created some competition, some prizes. And it, and then also at the same time, you know, teaching and training him like it's okay it's okay if that's not your superpower right it's okay yeah yeah so there's like an overall concept perspective of like you you are you are who you are because on yeah. purpose right yeah. you are who you are on purpose don't get your value from all these other things all these other rubrics and standards and things that other people put right. on you right and then but there's a part of life where we all have to be like we have to have a minimum like you, yeah. you have to read in your life <laughs> told them you gotta read so yeah. you, gotta, you gotta read decently so we've right. got to work on it so it's not like a pass and I think that's really a big part of it we don't want parents to feel like oh well that's not a strength it's a pass no we yeah. we, we, we don't we don't um believe that 
either. Right. Um, however, how can we take his strengths and yeah. work with his teacher and create an environment where it's really positive? Yeah. And it's not this negative push for excellence in an area that he probably may not meet in this, at the right. same level as his brother who's reading at a junior high level. Right. You know? Right. Yes, so, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so, and then you put together something based on his strengths that would right. help him get to that. Like, right. so would you say that for all of your kids, the, the competition, like prizes type thing would have been a good motivator? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would have been like, <laughs> sure, great. great. I'm glad I got that, you know, <laughs> gumball that you offered me, but yeah. I don't care. <laughs> yep. That's precisely right. It would not have worked with every child. No. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that's really um, important. And it feels like from the work that you guys are doing, like just because these are your examples doesn't mean that this is what you should do. And I think that's one of the beauties about the strengths perspective and about your book as well. It's like we're giving our examples and they're based on the strengths of our kids and the strengths of right. them. This is not what I'm telling you is going to work when your child is struggling with reading, right? right. What I'm telling you is, find the things that make them shine. And I think you guys say that in your book, your, yeah. your eyes shine. I just, yeah. I love that. That's like one of my favorite aspects of it. Cause like find the things that make their eyes shine and then apply it to the things that they do have to at least like meet, you know, meet standard on. Right. You don't love it because it will help them love it more. Right. Uh, and that, that's just a beautiful picture. And you know, one, one other thing that I'll share about this and this even, you know, it, it came home with us because obviously he had to practice reading right. every day. Um, so one thing that we did was also, you know, basically change the um, momentum of our after school activities. And so, for instance, because he loves sports, like he comes alive. If I could let him play basketball till midnight, he literally would. I have to call him in when the sun's they have <laughs> spotlight out. I mean, he just loves sports. I'm like, okay, you're going to get ran over. You need to get in. <laughs> so, so one thing that we did was we structured his homework environment differently. So he does, he loves math. So he can come home and do math, go out and play basketball. Wow. So, and maybe, you know, for parents who want to be more structured, you could say, Hey, you've got to do a hundred jump shots or you, you know, where it's like uh, you're, you're practicing to get better. Right. You've got to make this many, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then come in and do your reading. And what we found was when you switch that up, when they're doing something that makes their eyes shine and that gives them energy, they're actually going to come into that environment of reading with, with a, a larger fuel tank, right. Yeah. Of readiness to like tackle it. And you know, it's, it's, I think pretty normal. Most parents are like, okay, before you do anything fun. I know, right. Yes. Totally. I, you hate first. You, know? <laughs> you must be sitting in my house. I don't know what you're talking about, but yes, I, that, that never happened in our house. No. <laughs> No, 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 I get it. Totally. It's kind of, we like, feel like it's like this motivator, like do all this crappy stuff first because then you're going to get to this stuff that's awesome. Well, how slow are they? Oh right. my goodness. Like painfully slow sometimes on doing those things that they're like, I don't want to do this. I hate doing this. I don't, why are you making right. me do this? Right. And like I said, be intentional. So we're not saying, Hey, just let them go out for yes. two hours and right. like, Hey, okay. For the next 15 minutes now, time. what do you love? Okay. You want to do, you want to build a, whatever, something of the Legos or, all right, you got 15 minutes, put the timer on, let them get that energy of what they, you know, really love and then get them on that one task that, you know, it's going to take more energy. So they have some reserves, you know, yeah. think about ourselves. I know I have way I more energy so when I come out of like doing something that makes me feel alive. And then I have to, I don't know, like for me, a lot of times it's emails or, you know, where I'm like, okay, I'd rather be talking. But. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to do this. But I, but when you had just come out of like, I don't know, presenting or even meeting with a client or whatever, I'm sure makes you feel alive. That energy is like kind of it carries it, you through. It yeah. through. It's like, I feel revived right now. I can do yeah. this thing that I don't care for as much. But for it sure. Yeah. But it has to be done because there's those tasks in all of our lives. Yeah, right? for sure. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, that, I love that example. It's a great example. I love that it's an example that's specific to to Daniel. It's not an example that's specific to your other kids. I mean, or to my kids or to right. a, a, any similar situation. It's just, that's what you guys are talking about. And that's yeah. what I think, you know, you know, what the strengths perspective 
itself brings is like a different way to look at things. That's not like do this as a parent because this is the right way to do it. Exactly. It, rather, it's saying, you know what? Figure out the things that are great about them. Then that's the right way to do it for that kid, for you as a parent. Right. It's really just being a student of your child. And that's what we bring into the book. Like, you know, it, it is our job to care for them and to love them and to take care of them. But being a student is different. It's, you have to be way more engaged. Mm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a different activity totally. uh, when, you're, when you're trying to learn about them. Yeah, studying, studying who they are and how they're going to take Yeah. Them. Yeah. Well, um, overall, I mean, obviously, we're, you're, we're hearing how you went from feeling like, okay, something's off. We're not connecting with our kids like we thought we were going to. Um, what I'm saying to this kid isn't getting through in the same way that it's getting to this kid. Kind of a, a little bit, I mean, if I could summarize, like a little bit of confusion or a little bit of like, shoot, we're not meeting the expectations that we kind of set for ourselves and our parenting. Right. And there's this heart issue of like, I am not connecting in the way that we want to. So you went from that place, which I think, I mean, I can, I can relate with already, even as, you know, a parent of younger kids right. to the place now where you're feeling like you're helping them figure out how do they fire on all cylinders and yeah. applying it to the kids that live in your house still of like, how do we help them grow up to be kind, responsible adults that have, you know, can, can function in society? Right. Um, so what would you say kind of is the overall difference about you and your family now that you know your strengths and you've walked in them significantly? You know, I, I would say the overall difference is there's much more grace extended to one another. I think that that, that, is, that is something um, – that we have seen happen, you know, tangibly. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to cry. No, I know. I, I, you know, they're your kids. I know. I'm with you. <laughs> I think that well, as they understand each other, you know, it's hard. You want all your kids to love each other, right? Oh, like yes, yes. insanely love each other. And I, I think that even when we've had situations where there was maybe one against each other, that the understanding of strengths have, it's actually built bridges. And that's why I'm crying. Yeah. Um, and I think, wow, how would we have gotten here? Hadn't they been able to better understand where the other one was coming from? Mm. So, you know, I think that, you know, there's just, there's a, a lot of forgiveness mm. and joy. Ah, so it's, I mean, and you can tell, I mean, that's, that's why it's coming out yeah. through your emotions. It's like, because it's affected the most significant parts of your life to say like, yeah. you know, not only do we have a perspective, but we have a language to be able to, right. to make things right that aren't right, to be able to love each other better. I mean, I love that you say grace, like there is just, and we, I talked about it in a workshop yesterday, a corporate workshop. That's what we, the word that came up was grace. It's like, kind of seems like this gives us the opportunity to have like a little more grace for each other. I'm like, yes, you know? like, that's exactly what it does. Yeah. And when it happens in your house, like to those relationships that are most important, right. to you, like there, there's right. nothing more that you can There's ask. nothing better. And, you know, and I always like to be clear, like it doesn't mean that we excuse things that are, you know, that need to be dealt with. So it's, mm -hmm. it's that, it's that happy marriage between, you know, you still have to deal with things, but because you have a language and because you have an understanding, a better understanding of who people are, yeah. you know, so you're self-aware and then you have a better understanding of who the people are. Um, it just, it, it does, it creates an environment where, you know, you go, okay, I'm not going to take that to heart. Like I maybe would have because right. of X, Y, Z, you know? Yeah, totally. Yes. I mean, I could probably go on just about conversations David and I had today about, yeah. you know, offering each other a little bit of space to, right. to have a positive intent, like, like assume a positive intent assume and the best. Yeah. Assume the best. And that's, and that's actually, that's in our book. Like mm. assume the best in each other always. Yeah. yeah. And, and for some reason, like, why is it hard? I don't know, but it's a very hard thing to do because so you start to like create this story in your head and what the strengths perspective does. And I think this is, this is what you're talking about beautifully is like, it offers you a language and a lens to say, okay, actually 
this helps me assume the best, right? Like right. It helps me look for the best right from the beginning. Oh. Right. Yeah. So good. So, okay. So just drawing from your own personal experience, everything you've shared and, and, and beyond, uh, what encouragement or advice would you give to someone who can, who can really resonate with your like pre strengths world problems who can say, I, I'm, I don't feel like we're connecting like I want to, I'm trying these different things. Or sometimes they're working on one, they're not working on another. What advice or encouragement would you give? So I would say this, like one of the things that we really want to encourage parents on is um, not to compare. Hmm. That's, you know, stop comparing yourself to another parent, to another situation, um, to another family even. Um, so, so take the load of comparison off, which is sometimes real heavy on some people, you know, so take, take that off, take the comparison yeah. uh, load off your back. Um, and then, you know, another thing I think too, is realizing that every one of our children have a God given talent. They have greatness within them, but the cool thing is, is so do you. And, you know, giving yourself that opportunity to really look at your kids with fresh eyes and actually seeking out like what makes them shine? When do I see that joy just you know, exuberant joy come out of them and just keep it simple. I think sometimes mm -hmm. we complicate things. Um, just keep it simple, you know, look at, yeah. just begin looking at them differently. And I feel like as you change the lens and take off the comparison, um, mm -hmm. you know, load on your back and you realize, okay, these are my kids. I, I, I want to know them, you know, intently yeah. and purposefully. Um, and allow yourself to just begin looking at them because it will come out. That's the cool thing. Like once you get intentional, you're going to see it. It just comes. It's natural. These are your natural yeah. patterns of thought, feeling, behavior. They will come out. If it I will come out. It's not like you're going to be like, where are you? <laughs> it's going to come out. Um, but, but it also, it, it also creates, I think this shift is a really collaborative environment. And I think from our conversation, I brought that up too, that it's a, it's a, you're collaborating with your family on it. It's not like a, this is how it's going and this is how I see it. I mean, there's, there's lots of conversations. So that's a yeah, cool thing, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's never too late. Yeah. That's never too late. Thing. I mean, it's I, never too late. I love that you have the spectrum of, of ages of your kids. Yeah. So you've, you've experienced what it's like to start when they're in high school and you've also experienced what it's like to start like from birth basically. Right. And so you, you're just, you are a wonderful example. Your family is a wonderful example of like how it's not too late. It's like, if, even it's if you're never too late. Out of the house, it's not too late because you it's, it always can benefit from helping them understand who they are through their strengths uh, yep. and, and who they are wired to be. We've had parents who have launched their children and, you know, the concept of the book was, you know, it was a whole new perspective for them, but they knew, you know, for them, they were like, well, I need that, but is it too late? And I'm like, it's never too late. And because the cool thing is, is your kids are going to get married and then they're going to have, you yeah. know, potentially have Remember children. Those grandkids? That's your next book, like grandparenting by their strengths, right? <laughs> it's, it, it isn't. It's never too late for a do-over because I feel like it, because this um, shift is totally positive based, hmm. you know, even if it, if you feel like, wow, you know, my kids are going to be leaving in two years. So why not make the next two years awesome? Yeah. Even better, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Annalyn, for sharing your story and just for being willing to show up with your whole heart and your whole, um, oh. your whole, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess that's what we do when we show up with our families and our marriages. Yeah putting our whole heart out there. And I think that's why the work that you guys are doing is so important because it impacts the, the very core of who we are. When we strip everything else away, you know, we're, we're left with, man, what is my, what is my family like? And yeah. what am I doing to help create a positive environment that they can all thrive? Um, and so thank you for sharing your story of that. Okay. And then for, uh, for putting out your ideas into the world so that we all can benefit from them. And we'll be looking forward to, um, hopefully all of us, you know, if you're okay. listening today, head on over to their website, which I will list. Ah, there it is. Play to this. Wow. <laughs> uh, head on over to their website, which I will list in uh, the conclusion and in the show notes. And we'll make sure that we get all the, the links out there, but you can um, buy that today, wherever books are sold. Um, and, uh, 
you will, I know, be impacted by what Annalyn and Brandon have shared about their family and their hearts uh, and, um, and the ways that they can build a thriving families just by playing to their strengths. So, awesome. Thanks so much, Annalyn. Thanks for having me. All right. Chat later. Bye. Bye. Annalyn's story really gives us hope that it's never too late to switch up your strategies and perspectives as a parent and also gives us some really good practical first steps to get started. Their brand new book, Hot Off the Presses this month, is called Play to Their Strengths, a new approach to parenting your kids as God made them. And man, it's just, it's packed with practical application and stories about actually how to really make strengths-based parenting a reality. So check out Play to Their Strengths on Amazon because they are already getting fabulous reviews over there from so many people. Plus, you can learn more about Annalyn Miller and her husband Brandon too, and the work that they do to help families over at AnnalynBrandon.com. That's A-N-A-L-Y-N Brandon.com. And just like Annalyn, you can be a part of creating thriving lives, families, and workplaces across the entire world. Because when you orient your mind towards what's strong about you and about the people around you, great things happen. And hey, also, could you help get this message spread? If you believe in the strengths perspective or part of you was impacted by this interview today, would you head over to iTunes and leave a rating? That's the thing with the little stars. And if you're feeling inspired, a short review there would be so helpful too. So thanks so much in advance for that. I'm glad that you were here today to hear how others like Annalyn have fueled significant changes in their lives by focusing in on their strengths. And I hope that you join me for more next time on Isogo TV.